All right, guys, so we are going live. So if you have questions, please ask away. But the purpose of this live section is to talk about BBL or Brazilian butt lift safety and in terms of how dangerous it is versus other procedures or things like that. Because I'm sure sometimes Jennifer is our patient coordinator or Alex is our social media patient care coordinator gets questions about the safety of any time you're transferring but either to your butt, to your breast, to your face, to kind of wherever. Yeah, I mean, it, this whole section that we're gonna be talking about is the fat transfer. I know that there was an article in a TV segment talking about the dangers from it, so we just wanna clarify some things that come across that patients ask about or that, you know, we get details on. So in terms of what I've been talking about, there's a very prominent plastic surgeon that said basically BBL should be outlawed or banned. And actually, the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, or ASPS, has formed a task force with the American Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons, or ASAPS, to basically look into this. Yes, there have been actual patient deaths from fat transfer to the butt. And basically what they found, so that this is understood, is that these <coughs> patients that passed away, it's because the fat was injected into their butt under their butt muscle or the gluteus maximus muscle. When you do that, the fat will travel into a vein, go up into your heart, and basically stop your heart or your lungs from beating. So as long as you're not putting the fat into the muscle, it is very safe. And again, there's been thousands and thousands of fat transfers to the butt that have been totally safe. But again, when people that don't understand how to do it are injecting it into places they shouldn't, it's going to be a bad thing. Just like if you don't know what you're doing with a breast augmentation and all of a sudden you're putting it where the lungs are, that's bad. Obviously, it's a lot harder to do that because, again, you have ribs to protect you, but in the butt, you don't. So it's all about patient safety. So I know now we have some questions. So, um, Can you go over the different kind of butt enhancement procedures? For example, butt injections, butt lifts, Brazilian butt lifts, silicone implants, silicone injections and then the dangers in between the different kinds. So, I mean, like Dr. Mara said, when I'm talking to patients, people are always asking, well, what can I do to, you know, make my butt look bigger or shape my butt? Keep in mind that Dr. Mara does not say, you need this specific procedure. It's always what the patient is kind of looking for. And that's what my job with Dr. Mara is to kind of help that patient find what's the safest procedure and what will kind of help with their vision. Um, like she was saying, there are injections. Those are kind of like with fillers um, that you could do. There is the fat transfers that Dr. Mata is really well known for. Um, and there's also implants. So I don't know if Dr. Mata wants to kind of clarify the difference between each of one of them. Gotcha. So I would say the most commonly done thing is fat transfer. And the reason is because it's more natural. Anytime you put butt implants, there is a revision rate, meaning that there's gonna be problems. Yeah because breast implants have problems and nobody really touches them for the majority of the time. They're sitting in a bra or they're sitting without one, not really being touched or moving. Anytime you have a butt implant, every time you sit, you walk, you stand up, that implant is moving and shifting. So it tends to cause complications. Usually the butt implant is placed in between the muscle, the gluteus maximus muscle in between there. Sometimes people put it underneath the covering of the muscle and sometimes people put it above the muscle. And again, there's a big profile in terms of complications when it comes to putting in butt implants. So that's an important aspect of things. When you do the fat transfer, obviously that's natural, but some people don't have enough fat. So then they are better candidates for a butt implant than they are for a Brazilian butt lift, which is nothing more than taking fat from one place and transferring it into your butt. When you're talking about injections, butt injections, you're talking either about Sculptra, Bellafil, silicone, Anything you can kind of inject into the butt. You can put yours into the butt, but the problem is, is that doesn't actually touch stuff. So you guys have to understand the concept of if you do fat transfer to the butt, it's gonna cost a lot less than if you're doing fillers. A lot of people talk about the non-surgical butt lift with Sculptra. You need at least 20 vials, and 20 vials is gonna get you maybe 200 cc's. And a Wait. vial is that big? Not so, a lot. Like for example, today I did a butt lift where I put 2,000 cc's, that's almost 100 vials of Sculptra per cheek that this person would need, which would make the cost ridiculous. And remember, it can last two years, sometimes if you're lucky, three, maybe four. 
So again, it is very expensive to do that stuff. I would never do any silicone injections into your butt because the scar tissue formation is so bad. I know some people advocate for it, but I would say it's a bad, bad, bad idea. Yeah, and going off of that topic, um, if you guys have seen, I know a lot of people have uh, asked the same question about that one lady on TV where she was flipping her implants. Those are the kind of complications that can happen with implants. And like we said, Dr. Mata is well known for doing his BBL transfers with the fat, um, reminding you guys that we do safe BBL. So if you notice, if you watch Snapchat, if you watch our Instagram stories, when he's doing it, it is above the muscle, it's right under the skin. That's why he's touching it as he's putting the fat transfer. Um, as well as with the um, filler, the cost is dramatically high because of the amount that, again, People can hit a little bit, but you won't see much of a difference unless you're using a lot. So, so that goes fine. along with our next question. What do you do to put patient safety first, Dr. Mara? Well, I think the most important aspect, it's not even about the surgery. It's about the medical clearance. And obviously, some people will be like, hey, I don't operate on anyone whose BMI is like 40 or 50 or 30 or 28 or 25, whatever that number is. Even if your BMI, let's say, is 25, which is normal but you have high blood pressure, you have diabetes, you have to have medical clearance. That always comes first. Again, if you have any kind of medical problem, you need to have that fixed before you even consider surgery because you shouldn't try to con a doctor or anyone into the matter of doing your surgery for you by hiding that information. So that's the aspect of patient safety that comes first. Obviously, when we do the procedure, we make sure that you're comfortable, that you're walking, support hose to prevent clots. Obviously, when we do the safe BBL or basically transferring the fat above the muscle, that's increasing the chances of not having problems as opposed to putting it under the muscle. We do require all these surgical clearances prior to surgery. And like he said, you don't want to lie to your doctor because we will find out. Um, and sometimes it's not a thing of trying to, you know, push away your surgery or anything like that. But for example, if a patient comes and they know they're diabetic and, you know, they want a specific date, but we get their blood lab and their diabetes is still high, their A1C count is too high, we will push off their surgery at least three months. And we won't do their surgery until they're cleared. And that's one, because again, we want our patients to enjoy their results. We want them to be able to have no complications and come happy to their follow-ups. But those things are done by having that clearance. So it's extremely important that our patients divulge all their information and let us know what's going on. So from the comment section of our post today, someone mentioned, if Brazilian butt lifts are dangerous, would fat transfer to other parts of the body have the same problem? I know all medical procedures have its risk, but is there an actual difference? There is, and the biggest difference is anytime you transfer fat to another place, you're not so close to major blood vessels. The reason the butt is so dangerous is because the blood vessels are like the size of your thumb, which is huge. So if you're putting in a cannula that's the size of a pinky into the thumb, it has the likelihood of injuring something. In other places, the blood vessels are tiny, so the likelihood of that fat traveling in there is a lot less. But you still always have the risk of getting fat emboli, which is when the fat travels in your bloodstream and causes heart problems. That can happen anywhere, even when you're doing fat transfer to the breast. But again, the likelihood is substantially smaller, okay? Okay, and then um, just to end the live, we didn't get any during the live segment, but just to end it all, what would you recommend to people who are looking into getting Brazilian butt lifts? What do you think about it as it being a trend or not? What's your overall opinion? I mean, BBLs have been a fast growing trend. People are inquiring about it more and more every day. So Dr. Mata is very clear when patients come into consultations, do your research, know who you're looking at. I know the last slide we talked about this too. It doesn't matter if it's with Dr. Mata or with the guy down the street, but we wanna make sure our patients know who they're going to, what experience they have. And if they're doing safe BBLs or not safe BBLs, I'm not sure, but it's very important to do your research. I would agree with that sentiment. And I know we had a live section last time about um, cosmetic versus plastics. And again, it's all about the safety factor. It has nothing to do with being a plastic surgeon or not, but it's about the safety. It's about how the fat is processed. And in terms of what it, the, the specifics that I think you might ask your surgeon is, 
hey, what size cannula is he using when he puts in the fat? Is it something big or is it something tiny? Because the smaller it is, the more likely it is to cause a hole into veins or to get under muscles. I mean, those are the important factors. Are they going above the muscle? And everyone says, oh yeah, I am, but then they're not. You know, and again, when you guys look at my Instagram stories or my Snapchats, you guys can actually see how I'm doing it, how the hands are there. And so there's more transparency that you guys are able to see exactly how I do it. You know, and obviously we do everything we can to make sure that things are right for everybody. Um, but again, no procedure is ever safe. Even if you're going above the muscle, that doesn't mean that you can't have problems. But obviously it minimizes the risk, just like any time you get into a car. Is it possible you could get in a car accident and something bad happened? Absolutely. But we still get in the car and do it anyways because it's kind of what we want. And again, when it comes to safe BBLs or basically putting fat above the muscle, it, it's up to your doctor. And again, you to understand what it is that you're asking for. Just like any procedure, there carries risks, okay? But you have to understand what risk are you willing to undertake to get the result that you want. Some people might say, okay, well, I'm not gonna do a fat transfer because it's too risky. I'm gonna do a, an implant. Well, if you end up with complications or an infection or whatever the case is, you might be unhappy. Or maybe you just don't have enough fat and even if you wanted one, you really can't get one. Mm -hmm. So again, it's all entirely up to the patient. I'm not the one that recommends you need a BBL. It's up to you and your decision whether you want a specific look that a Brazilian butt lift might get you. And remember, there are other things, you know, just sculpting the body makes your butt look better. And in my opinion, 70% of a BBL is what you remove, not what you're putting in. So again, that's what I would leave you guys with. Um, patient safety first, always and first. Yeah, pretty much it. Thank you guys.